Hey, good morning. You're watching World is One News with me, Aditi Singh. Now, let's take a look at what's happening around the world on We On Speed. U.S. President Donald Trump has left for Washington, D.C. for a rally in Michigan ahead of White House Correspondents Association dinner. Trump, who has feuded with several media personalities and organizations, is not attending the annual black tie dinner for the second straight year. Last year, Trump was the first U.S. president to skip the event in 36 years. Most officials in his administration also snubbed the dinner. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan has unofficially kicked off his re-election campaign on Saturday, vowing to defeat the secularist opposition in historic snap elections that he has called for June. Although yet to formally declare his candidacy, Erdogan has held what was effectively his first campaign rally in the coastal city of Izmir, the stronghold of the secular CHP opposition party. Armenian opposition leader has rallied in his hometown of Ijevan and called for more demonstrations against the country's ruling elite days before the South Caucasus nation's parliament is due to pick a new prime minister. Armenia's ruling party has said that it would not put forward any candidate for prime minister to avoid stoking tensions after more than two weeks of street protests. New York's yellow cab drivers have joined with drivers for Uber and other app-based ride services at a rally to call for a guaranteed minimum pay and limits on growth in the number of cars for hire in the largest U.S. city. Dozens of drivers in Lower Manhattan carried signs with slogans before presenting their demands to mayor and the city council. Mourners for Alfie Evans, the 23-month-old British toddler who gave, who gave, whose grave illness drew international attention, gathered to release balloons hours after his father said he had died. Alfie had a rare degenerative disease and had been in a semi-vegetative state for more than a year. After a series of court cases, a hospital in Liverpool removed his life support on Monday against his parents' wishes. Houthi leader Abdul Malik Al Houthi has said that the killing of a top official of the movement would not split its ranks. Saleh Al Samad was killed in a Saudi led airstrike last week. Samad was a relative moderate who helped oversee political and administrative duties while the Houthi military wing pursued fighting. Thousands of Yemenis attended a funeral of top Houthi official Saleh Al Samad, who was killed in a Saudi led airstrike last week. Al Samad is the most senior official to be killed by the Western backed alliance, which had offered a $20 million reward for any information that led to Samad's capture. Airstrikes by the Saudi-led coalition hit near a funeral rally for a senior Houthi official in Yemen's capital, Sana'a. There were no reports of casualties during the burial of Saleh al sama the president of the political body which runs Houthi-controlled northern Yemen. In a video shot by one eyewitness, a missile is heard incoming before an explosion erupts on the margins of the rally. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said the declarations of some Syrian opposition figures are damaging efforts to inject new life into Geneva peace process. Lavrov also said that there can be no preconditions for Geneva talks. Russia, Iran and Turkey have agreed that Syria peace process must continue despite Western missile strikes in Syria. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov also emphasized that Russia, Turkey and Iran need to help Syria's government to clear the country of terrorists. Lavrov said Russia has always condemned the use of chemical weapons regardless of the victims or the culprits.
Iran's foreign minister Mahmoud Javad Zarif and Turkey's foreign minister held talks in Moscow to discuss the situation in Syria. The two leaders also joined Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov to discuss a range of regional and international issues. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and Iran's Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif met in Moscow to discuss, among other things, the Iran nuclear deal. Both sides expressed concern about the future and stability of the joint comprehensive plan of action on the Iran nuclear program. Iran's foreign minister has said demands by US President Donald Trump to change 2015 nuclear deal with world powers were unacceptable. Trump has said that unless European allies fix the so-called terrible flaws in the Iran nuclear deal by May 12, he will refuse to extend U.S. sanctions relief for oil-producing Iran. The Syrian army and its allies engaged in a fierce battle with ISIS terrorists in an enclave south of Damascus. Tanks were seen rolling across an open area of fields to the edge of the enclave, which includes parts of Al-Qadam district, Al-Hajar al-Aswad and the Yarmouk Palestinian refugee camp. China has opposed the so-called Special 301 report on intellectual property rights the United States has used to justify its trade actions. China's Ministry of Commerce has issued a statement after the U.S. labeled 36 countries as inadequately protecting its intellectual property rights, keeping China on a priority watch list. Chinese President Xi Jinping has stressed on innovations in core technologies during an inspection to the optics valley of Chinese city of Wuhan. The Chinese President Xi emphasized that China needs its high-tech enterprises to speed up innovations and master more key technologies with proprietary intellectual property rights so as to gain dominance in the development of relevant industries. Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh have said that they are hopeful of help from the United Nations in regaining property and assets they left behind when they fled in Myanmar's Rakhine state. The refugees have also sought justice for the violence they suffered at the hands of the Myanmar military. They said that they would return to their homes across the border only if their demands were guaranteed by an international body. UN Security Council envoys began a four-day visit to Bangladesh and Myanmar to see firsthand the aftermath of a Myanmar military crackdown that was denounced as ethnic cleansing of Rohingya Muslims. The envoys are due to meet Bangladesh Prime Minister and Myanmar's de facto leader Aung San Suu Kyi and travel to Rakhine State where the violence erupted eight months ago. Myanmar denies the accusations of ethnic cleansing. Firefighters in Myanmar scrambled to put out a fire in a massive garbage dump on the edge of Yangon as foul smell smoke from the burning trash extended into its second week. Some 600 firefighters and members of security forces have been fighting the blaze since April 21st, while smoke from the burning trash has injured dozens. 26 people have been hospitalized, many suffering smoke inhalation. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo arrived in the Saudi capital for the first leg of his trip to the Middle East, where Iran is likely to be on the agenda. The former CIA director was greeted by Foreign Minister Adel al Jaber at King Salman Air Base in Riyadh. The State Department said Pompeo will also visit Jordan and Israel during the weekend after attending a NATO meeting on Friday in Brussels. North Korea's state-run television KRT has aired a video of its leader Kim Jong-un visiting the South for the Inter-Korean Summit, which they called a turning point for the Korean Peninsula. The video started with what is believed to be Kim's convoy passing the North Korean side of demilitarized zone and then showed Kim's activities in the South on Friday.
China's Dalian Wanda Group has launched its sprawling studio complex of Xingdao Oriental Movie Metropolis at an opening ceremony attended by hundreds. Wang Jialin, the billionaire boss of Wanda, said that he will return, he will turn the northern port city of Qingdao into a global film production hub. Chinese animal protection authorities are conducting the country's first ever general survey of black snub-nosed monkeys in southwest China's Yunnan province. The monkey is an animal under the state first level protection. The dense woods along the Jinchao River in Yunnan are home to reportedly more than 2,000 black snub-nosed monkeys, two-thirds of the species' total population worldwide. Hundreds of Gazans gathered in Khan Yunus to mourn the death of a 15-year-old Palestinian teenager who died after being shot by Israeli troops during protests at Israel-Gaza border on Friday. Hundreds of people gathered at his home in the southern town of Khan Yunus to attend the funeral. Israeli forces have killed 42 Palestinians since Gaza residents began staging protests along the border fence on March 30th. A statue for women taken as wartime sex slaves during World War II went missing from its post in the Philippines capital of Manila. The statue was found missing Saturday morning with only an excavator at the site. Local media reported a similar excavator was previously seen parked beside the statue last week. A spokesman for Manila City Hall said that they did not order the removal and that the statue is not in their custody. Britain's number two supermarket Sainsbury's and UK's Walmart Arm Asta are close to securing a merger deal. The combination would form a more powerful rival to British market leader Tesco. The combined group would retain the Sainsbury's name, though Asta stores would continue to trade under their existing banner. Two more wrestlers paraded around the wrestling ring at a temple in Tokyo holding up wailing babies in a ritual believed to bring food, to bring good health and ward off evil. Around 160 babies took part in the Klein Sumo ceremony which dates back four centuries. Similar events are held at temples across Japan. Participants have, to, have been born in the previous year and are chosen through a lottery. An Indonesia hospital in Aceh struggled to treat dozens of burnt victims from a fire at an illegal oil well that killed at least 18 as they scrambled to collect oil after the well overflowed. Firefighters struggled all day to put out the blaze in the northwestern province and were still working as darkness fell. The head of police said that the fire might have been sparked by a careless smoker. The sight of the leaders of the two Koreas eating Pyongyang-style cold noodles at the Inter-Korea Bankway has stimulated the appetites of Seoul residents. People stood in long queues outside restaurants to enjoy the noodles. The summit drew to a close with a noodle dish made by a, made by a chef from a famous restaurant in the northern Korean capital using a special noodle machine. Foreign ministers from the 10 member states of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations have welcomed the positive developments on the Korean Peninsula. The ministers who were in Singapore for a meeting ahead of the 32nd ASEAN summit made the remarks in a joint statement on the bloc's official website following the meeting. Chinese experts have said a peace treaty promised by leaders of North and South Korea will help enhance economic cooperation between not only the two countries but also others in the broader region. Experts say such talks will create more opportunities for deepening regional and even global economic relations.
Nicaragua Catholic faithful took part in an open-air mass to demand the end of violence in their country. This comes after a week of protests and clashes with police that left at least 43 people dead. Meanwhile, university students at the forefront of anti-government unrest in Nicaragua have issued conditions for talks with the government of President Daniel Ortega. Guatemala laid to rest former president and current mayor of the capital, Alvaro Arzu, who died on Friday at the age of 72. Arzu was one of the most influential politicians in Guatemala and had been the mayor of the capital since 2004. But last year, he was added to a long list of influential politicians under investigation for alleged corruption. Picasso's painting, the uh, Mosqueta Bosque, has been bought by 25,000 online buyers. This is the first time an important artwork is bought by a digital community. The painting was sold in 48 hours by an online seller in 40,000 parts for a total of 2 million Swiss francs. Uh, this is not the first time Swiss citizens gather to buy a piece of art. Now let's take a look at some of the national stories making the headlines. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi wrapped up his two-day China visit on Saturday after meeting Chinese President Xi Jinping in the city of Wuhan. The two leaders stressed on resetting their bilateral relations that strained in the backdrop of military standoff at Doklam last year. Earlier Saturday, Prime Minister Modi engaged in one-on-one -on -one talks with President Xi Jinping and also took a boat ride with him. Authorities of the Golden Temple, the holiest shrine of Sikhism in Amritsar, are constantly working to help in providing some relief to devotees from the scorching summers. The, Shirman, uh, the Shiromani Gurudwara committee responsible for upkeep of the temple has made special arrangements for the devotees by installing special jute carpets, cool drinking water and special temporary shades with fans aiming to bring some respite to the devotees. India's border security force and border guards Bangladesh held a joint retreat ceremony in Fulbari town of West Bengal. The joint drills by the BSF and border guards Bangladesh had been going on for the last few years. Hundreds of spectators were present at the retreat ceremony which was jointly inaugurated by Director General of BSF and Border Guards Bangladesh. People across India have reportedly resented the central government's decision to lease historical Mughal monument Red Fort to a private corporate group for restoration purposes. The government has signed a memorandum of understanding worth over $3 million for a period of five years, with a private group under its ambitious Adopt a Heritage Scheme. American production houses Annapurna and Plan B have acquired the rights to produce a film based on how reporters Jody Cantor, Megan Toy and editor Rebecca Corbett of the New York Times broke the Harvey Weinstein scandal story, the biggest Hollywood and the world has seen in decades. The reporters also received the Pulitzer Prize for their stories earlier this month. 